first, we gotta take a bike ride, and then we're gonna catch the sunset. So, let's go. I don't know what kind of slop she's talking about. But right now we're gonna ride bikes. We'll go pretty early uh, just to ride bikes. I haven't gotten my motorcycle registered, so for right now the bicycle is what we're riding. Holy crap, almost ran into a vine there. Wrong brake. <laughs> I thought it was the back brake. It was the front brake. Oh my gosh, my feet almost slipped off. Beginner rolling burnouts. Now I am not an expert, but I'm definitely learning. While I'm talking to you, we're gonna put away the chickens. Go on, go on, get. So what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be trying to learn rolling burnouts together. They have the concept down, and so I feel like sharing that with people who may not know how to do them is gonna be a helpful tip. And although there are experienced people on the internet putting them out, I think coming from a beginner's, a beginner's vantage point, that's the word I'm thinking of. And you never know, there might be a tip that you were, you were missing that, that was the missing link in you learning rolling burnouts, and I may give that to you today. <laughs> So you might be asking yourself, I thought you said that your bike was not registered, why are you riding it right now? And the answer to that is, because I want to! The reason why is kind of, doesn't really matter. But, the way I'm going to be riding it... The way I'm going to be riding it, I'm going to be staying on the back roads, as long as I'm not obnoxious and I make sure the neighbors don't call the cops on me. When I was learning rolling burnouts, there were three things that I had to understand. Well, there's probably more than three things, but the three things that I was not getting about rolling burnouts were where my weight should be on the bike, how hard I should be pulling in the front brake, and also how much gas to give. All of those things are really going to be modulated as you're riding. Try to put your crotch as close to your bars as you physically can get them. You're gonna put your weight over the bars, and you wanna compress the front forks down so the weight is not on the rear of your bike so it can break loose. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna learn how hard to pull in the front brake. You're gonna take your brakes and you're not going to fully lock them up. I roll about five to 10 miles an hour. I rock my body forward. And at the same time, I don't lock up the front brakes, like yoke them in all the way. Front forks are compressed almost all the way down and the weight is on that front tire. When I do that, the clutch has been in while I'm doing that. So I get up to speed five miles an hour, I pull in the clutch. The clutch is currently in. I rock my body up, I pull that front brake. When I do that, I give it gas directly before. So I get on the gas a little bit pulling that front brake my body's up to the front of it and i dump the clutch out so for me on the yamaha bolt it's going to be anywhere between five and ten miles an hour i get up to speed i pull in the clutch give it some gas so the gas is going i rock my body forward and pull in the front brake a little bit so even a little bit of front brake is going to compress those forks down and what that's going to do is it's going to shift the weight of the bike to the front end and then modulate my gas depending on how fast I want the burnout to be. But I dump it out and then I keep the front brake in. So let's do a little test of that. What ends up happening when you're doing rolling burnouts is after you try them over and over again, it becomes all one motion. Okay, so with the rolling burnouts, we've we've pulled in the clutch, rocked our body up to the front of the tank, given it some gas, bit that brake and dumped the clutch. So when I do it, I use two fingers. Two fingers to pull in the front brake. One finger you could do it with, but it's a lot more sturdy and you get a, you get a better grip, especially when it, it doesn't have dual rotors, it's just a singular rotor. So once you've started the burnout, what's gonna keep you going and also not make you go too fast is the modulation between how much gas you're giving and how much brake you're giving it. That's going to be something that you personally on your own bike. So the biggest things that I had to learn were body position, where I'm going to be, which is going to be on the front of the tank as far forward to the bars as you can be. How much gas to give in the beginning, because you got to break that back tire loose, so you're going to want to give it a good amount of gas. And then how much front brake to use. So what I recommend 
is making sure your front tire is nice and grippy. A good piece of advice I actually got from a stunter from Florida. He's been making YouTube videos for just a little while now, and I could never understand how his rolling burnouts were always so nice, and he could go over bumps, crap on the road, and not slip out, and that, that was a big fear of mine was slipping out um, because my front tire loses traction. He explained it in one of his videos, and he said, you're going to want to go up to a 110 width on the front. On the front tire, it's 190 19. So that's a 19 inch rim. If you're wanting to do rolling burnouts, if you go up to a 110 in width, you'll gain a lot more surface area, which means you'll gain a lot more traction. And I'll show you when I put the tire on. I have a 110 at the house that I'm going to be putting on after this one's worn out. I think that's definitely enough talking. Let's uh, let's practice a few of them. I'm going to ride around this area a little bit and then we're going to go to a park to watch the sunset. So I got to hurry up. I'm going to miss the sunset if I don't hurry up. All right, we'll get you guys a few rolling burnouts and then we'll head on out of here. I don't just want to do straight rolling burnouts. I feel like that's kind of boring and I don't know, I feel like it's kind of lame. So I've been practicing turning corners while doing rolling burnouts and it's not only intimidating, but kind of hard. There we go. It looks a lot better like this. I was on linear the whole time. I hope all that footage is uh, usable because this is so much better. I was wondering why it looks so small. beautiful park and we're gonna get out to a really nice dock I'll take some pictures I'll make sure to throw them in the video as well there's this thing here and I just thought it'd be really cool to get that on video because you don't see stuff like that very often I think it's pretty beautiful and I wish I had one of those in my yard but just not the case today it's pretty windy out so this thing's really working overtime and it's pumped so much water out that it's literally spilling over Alrighty guys, so this is the place I was talking about in the car. It's definitely worth coming out here. The sun will be setting in about 30 minutes and it's gonna be like red all the way across the water. It's really beautiful. All right guys, I got all the way down here to get this shot for you. <laughs> Now we're gonna head on over to a huge tree that's up there. It's a pretty big tree. I'm gonna try to get up inside of it, but we'll get back for the sun, probably. I hope. Oh, he's got to I'll let you go, okay? You just come back. So we're gonna head back and grab Haley. We ran ahead and tried to get to the tree, but it's getting dark and I wanna catch that sunset. Whew. I'm out of breath right now.